This video is an introduction to Carlson eConnect, Carlson's recent product release on the Android platform. Carlson eConnect is an easy tool to configure and use Carlson drivers on Android. This allows you to use your high accuracy Carlson positions and RTK corrections with any other application you have running on your tablet. In this example, we're going to use Esri Field Maps. When you use Esri Field Maps or any other standalone app, you use the internal positions of your Android tablet, which most of the time are only accurate to within a few meters. So if we launch Esri Field Maps on our tablet and we go into our map, we'll see that right now my position from my tablet is only accurate to 11.5 meters, which is not enough for most of what you're trying to do. Carlson eConnect will use the concept of mocked positioning to override the internal position of the tablet with a high accuracy position. This video will go all the way through the installation of eConnect to using field maps. Let's get started. Let's start by installing Carlson eConnect. The first time you install this software, you're going to need to upload the APK file to some sort of cloud storage that you can access from your device. I've uploaded my installation file to Google Drive, which I've already signed in on this device. So I'm going to navigate to my Google Drive folder. And here I can see that I have the Carlson eConnect 1.2.24 APK in my Google Drive already. So to install it, I'm just going to tap it right there from the Google Drive. And it's going to download the software, which may take a few minutes. Once the software is downloaded, it'll begin installation. Tap the install button to install. You may get a pop-up warning at this point saying something about trying to install applications from a third-party application. If you do, just turn on the setting that you're prompted with. And if you get this unsafe app one, uh, just press install anyway. This is because typically Google wants you to go through the Play Store to install things. We're not going to do it that way on the first installation. After you've installed this once, if you want to update the version of software, you can do it from within the software. So now we've got Carlson eConnect installed. And it's going to prompt us for some permissions that are necessary to run the app. Just go ahead and choose allow on all the permissions. And the software is launching. Finally, we're going to see the end user license agreement, which you should read carefully and then accept to use the software. I've already read it, so I'm going to scroll through. Now, before we do anything else, we're going to change some operating system settings to enable mocking positions on the device. Press the home button at the bottom of your tablet to return to the main screen of Android. You'll see that the Carlson eConnect icon is now available. Swipe down from the top of your device to access settings, and you may have to pull down a secondary menu, as I'm doing here. And we're going to put our device into developer mode, which is necessary to enable mocked positions. This can be a little bit different on various tablets. You can usually Google how to do it, but it's pretty standard. Mostly the way it works is you scroll down until you find the About Tablet button on your tablet. And then we're going to scroll down again until we see the build number. Here you can see build number CT8X2V103. And you're going to tap on that build number five or six times until you get a pop-up on the bottom that says you're now a developer. Now, in my case, I was already a developer, so it didn't change. But if you were tapping there, you would see your pop-up come up and change. So to prove that we're a developer, we're going to hit the back arrow to go back one level. We're going to go to System. And now you should see under Advanced or somewhere under the System tab, this new option for Developer Options. Tap on that to expand the Developer Options. And we're going to scroll down until we see something about Mocked Positioning. And here it is, Select Mock Location App. It may look a little bit different on your tablet. You can always Google how to find this setting, but it's going to be pretty standard. So I'm going to tap on that option and I'm going to set my mock location app to Carlson eConnect. Again, you only need to do this once as you're setting up for the first time and the setting will stick. This is the setting that is telling the Android operating system that Carlson eConnect will be providing the positions that you need for other applications. All right, press home to get back to the main screen and let's relaunch Carlson eConnect. And what you see when you first launch the software is called the dashboard. That is the location where you're going to be doing all of this setup within eConnect to get your positions ready. So the first thing we have to do is set up our instrument. If I had already configured something, I would see my instruments I'd configured before in this drop down box. But since I have none, I'm going to press the plus icon to add a new instrument configuration. I have a Carlson BRX7 here on my desk, so I'm going to choose GPS Carlson BRX7 as the model. 
and leave the profile name as Carlson BRX7, although you can choose to rename this if you want. Next, I'll press comms. Here's where I make my Bluetooth connection. If you haven't already found the Bluetooth device with your tablet, press the plus icon and do a Bluetooth search to find the device. In my case, I already have. This is the serial number of my BRX7, so I'll just press connect to create the Bluetooth connection between the device and the tablet. Now we're going to end up on the settings page, and some of these settings are probably very familiar to you. We've got the antenna name and the rod height, which we're going to put in as two meters. And finally, you have receiver settings. Sometimes when I'm using eConnect, I do like to turn on my receiver audio. This gives me audio from the receiver itself if I were to lose fix while I'm working. Uh, finally, we want to leave SureFix enabled, elevation mask, and make sure you have all those constellations turned on for your best positional accuracy. I'll press RTK. On the RTK tab is where we're going to set up our RTK input. This can be the internal radio. It can be your internal GSM modem. If you're using something over L-band like Atlas Corrections, that would be satellite. Or you can use data collector internet, which is I'm going to do here, meaning I'm going to use the internet source that's inside my tablet to provide corrections to the receiver. Under data collector internet, I can choose whether I want Intrip, SpiderNet, Listen Listen, or Skynet, which is Carlson's new nationwide RTK network. I'm going to choose Intrip in this case, and I'm going to press the gear icon to configure Intrip. Here you can see that I've already entered my Intrip credentials, so I'll just press Done to get the source table. And the base that I want to choose is in this list. It is the Carlson HQ MSM5, which just happens to be a nearby base. So I'll press Done. And now my GPS is configuring. We're setting up the Intrip connection and getting everything ready for the survey. and everything is now set up. There are two other items on the dashboard that I wanna discuss before we move forward because they may be important to your survey. If you have a receiver which has IMU and has the ability to correct for tilt, can apply that tilt correction to your position. The one weakness to this solution is that when you're using this with a third-party application, you won't have access to the status icon at the top telling you if your tilt has lost the ability to correct. To make up for this, what we do is Carlson eConnect will artificially push your GPS receiver into autonomous mode if we can't correct for tilt and this option is enabled. This will prevent you from accidentally storing positions where you think you're correcting for tilt, but it's not actually correcting. So I'm not going to use that option right now. You can turn it on if you want it. And when you do, you'll see a tilt icon up here in the left of the status screen in the next screen. But I'm going to leave that off because I'm indoors. And the next thing we may want to do is apply a geoid to our mock location. Many third-party applications don't have support for geoids, so you can use Carlson eConnect to apply that correction to the elevation before sending it to the third-party application. I am going to turn on that option, and I can select my geoid from the drop-down list or use the download icon to pull down a geoid that covers my area. All right, let's go ahead and press start. We're now looking at the status screen of Carlson eConnect. This is where you're going to leave this sitting when you jump over to third-party applications, which makes it really easy to come back into this application to check your status at any time. We've got our latitude, longitude, your elevation, um, and you can also turn mock locations on and off easily from this screen or reconnect and disconnect RTK. So this gives you everything you need to keep running with your receiver while you're in a third-party application. On the top, you can see the green icon indicates that this position is fixed, and the green bar indicates that this position is fixed, making it really easy to glance back over and make sure everything's okay. To get back into the dashboard at any time, you can press the dashboard icon. To change the rod height, tap on the rod height in the top corner, top on the bar here, and you can change the rod height. And finally, if you wanna access some more settings, you can go into the pyramid, and there are other settings that you can modify here. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but if you need to access any settings, they're up in the pyramid. This is also where you would go to quit or exit the software or to update your software from inside the About screen. All right, let's jump on over to Esri Field Maps and see how this is working. I'm just gonna use the Home button on my tablet to go back to the desktop and then tap on Esri Field Maps to launch it again. And we can see right away the GPS accuracy is now one centimeter. So this position is coming from Carlson eConnect. 
At any time, if I want to jump back over into eConnect to check on the status of my receiver, I can press that home button again and just tap on the eConnect icon and glance at the status screen. So we can easily go back and forth. Now, one foible that I want to point out about Esri Field Maps is that sometimes if you launch Carlson eConnect before you launch Field Maps, you'll see a flickering of position here in this line where I'm highlighting. All you need to do in that case to recover it is jump back over into eConnect, turn off your mock locations, and turn them back on. Once you're using this daily, the right way to do things is to launch Field Maps first and check out your low accuracy position then go and launch Carlson eConnect and then jump back over into field maps. What we found is that if you do things in this order, it works quite well. Otherwise, you may have to turn mock locations on and off again to get field maps updating from eConnect. I hope this video helps get going with Carlson eConnect. Feel free to call Carlson Tech Support if you have any questions or problems or need additional help. Thank you.